Hello. Happy Friday. It's Connor. It is late and it is a Friday. I'm in my nice robe or dressing gown, keeping me nice and warm on this very cold, very, very cold Friday evening. However, I promised I would get this video out and this is what I'm doing for you right now. So, the question that I guess all the time, guessed all the time, get asked all the time, is how do you handle bundle products in Halo? The top answer is poorly honestly, but I think I found the best solution for this one. I've had a little bit of help from Halo as well, if you've been back and forth a little bit, and there's a few ways you can handle it. I'm going to show you the first way, which I don't recommend, just as a quick overview to, to let you know this is the kind of the Halo way or the preferred way of doing it. I just don't think it works for MSPs. I've been in the space for many years now, and I just generally do not believe it works very well. So first thing is, is this is on the beta version only, so I am running version 2.104.3. And this is the non-preferred way. But essentially, if you go into products and go to recurring items and select one of them, you will now see the product bundle exists here. Now, all this is, is a renamed tab. It used to be called related products, but they've added cost and pricing now. Now, the reason I don't recommend doing it this way is for a few reasons, to be honest. The first reason is, is you might sell a bronze support package or silver gold, or you know have bundled products in, but the assumption here is that every single bundle you sell is identical. The price you pay for them products is always the same. And the cost you associate with that product to the customer is also the same. Now, we all know a great sales tactic is to discount products, is to say we'll give you business basic for free or we'll include it. And we're quite dynamic, right, as MSPs. We like to add value and, and win customers based on things we can provide free. And I think doing it this way kind of locks you in. You know, this is saying, right, this is the bronze support package. This is always going to be the cost. This is always going to be the items that are in this package. If they need to deviate from it, you then got to make a bronze support package too. And again, this can get really messy. So I don't recommend doing it this way. And also from a reporting perspective, um, the issue with doing it this way is, is you'll have to reference the agreement and then also reference the, the products catalog. And if at any moment you change that product line in the product catalog, that would affect all of your reporting. So you could say, you know, you might have locked in business basic for a customer for a year and it costs you three pounds. And then with NCE, new customers, it costs you six pounds. But how would you reflect this in here? You'd have to then make another business basic or even remember to make another business basic for NCE costs as opposed to just doing it at the agreement level. So I don't recommend doing it this way. That's what I'm going to start with. So I'm going to show you how I do recommend it. I'm not saying it's the prettiest way, but I think from a usability and actual, the end outcome is very similar and I think it's perfect. So let me go ahead and show you. So first of all, a caveat to start this conversation with is whenever you're doing a recurring invoice or a manual invoice or even a quote, make sure the product exists in your product or item catalog. If you're on the USA language pack, it will say items. English language pack or UK language pack, it will say products. Same thing. The reason I say this is because if you want to start pulling reports on how many of X products you sell and you have different named products, it's going to be a nightmare. If you add them manually to an invoice, you're going to have to pull all the invoices down and then try and whittle it down or filter it out. And it's just not going to work very well. So make sure if you're invoicing or we're doing a recurring invoice or even a quote, you add the item in here. Yes, it's a bit more work, but the, the analytics you can pull from that and the reports you can pull are going to be so much stronger than these ad hoc made generated items. So. I'm just going to go ahead and make an item very quickly. And let's say that this customer, let's say we normally bundle in something for customers. So let's say, I don't know, uh, let's say a Cronus workstation backup. Let's say we, we bundle this into our per user billing because it's a nice thing to do. All right. So I'm going to say it's a recurring product. Yes, it exists in the group recurring items and the billing period is monthly. And that's all we need to worry about right now. We'll go into more of these settings in a later video, but for today, we'll skip past it. Costing and pricing, the price to the customer is £20 a month. I know we're going to bundle it, just stay with me. The cost to me is £5 or $5. Now, the difference between these two boxes is the, the idea is, is that when you put it on a recurring invoice, it will be X price. And when you just sell it one off, it will be the price on the left. And um, again, not too important for today. I'm just going to go ahead and save that. If you are running the latest version, you will notice the following thing happens when you do this. I don't know when it appears. It seems to be random as far as I can tell. But in a minute, a box will pop up. There we go. Update item prices on recurring invoices. Again, I don't recommend you do this. Um, if you have, I don't know, Microsoft Business Basic and you realize the product is wrong and then you update this, 
and then you tell it to update prices on all your recurring invoices, you're going to have a field day because we sell things at different prices depending on what margin we need to make, depending on the customer, depending on the number of users they have, you know. And I just think this, you're going to run into more headaches than you are just going through a few invoices to, to adjust them accordingly. So just thought I'd add that in there as well. So we've made a product, a Cronus Workstation Backup. We then go to our agreement. And I've added a few things in here. So a few really important things, and I'll just go ahead and delete all this for you and make it with you now. I like to group up on my invoices to make them look pretty, but also because it adds value in what we're about to do. So the problem with groups at the minute is, is you can't order these. Once you make them, they are made, they exist in the order that you made them. So just make sure you make them in an order that makes sense. Um, you can add groups of items. I'm just gonna do this manually now, but we'll touch upon groups in another video if that's something you require. So let's start with manage server cost based on user. Let's do license costs. And then let's do, uh, let's do, I don't know, let's call this uh, free of charge licenses, okay? So what we can do now is quite simple. We can start adding the recurring items. So let's say I have a bronze support package just because that's what I like to name it and the pricing is typical across most customers again and we'll show you how this works in a minute anyway. We have a Cronus workstation backup. We have business basic, business premium, and we have some, uh, let me do sofa send point protection. Okay. It's going to go and save and refresh the screen. Um, the reason I do this is because these groups can be a little bit buggy. You don't have to do this, but if you notice when you put an item in a group, it doesn't go there. Refresh your screen, it'll work. Then we need to basically move these into the right groups, add the right pricing, right costs, and basically work out the quantities. So bond support package, this is based on number of users. Now, unfortunately, I'm working in Mendy test org, which has no users. But what you would do at this stage now is do choose quantity of, uh, choose quantity based on user count, select that and select the users. I'm just gonna say there's five users, 60 pounds a month, cost me nothing. And click save. Oh, need to move the group first of all, put this into manage service user, save. That line item will then pop up here. And what we're saying here is it, it the price is £60 to the customer, but this doesn't actually cost me anything. This is me just selling it because I bundle things into this cost. I then say that actually business basic sits in license costs, as does business premium. And I'm going to say that this customer has three business basic. Again, you would base this off uh, choose quantity from subscriptions or from license counts. But in this case, I don't have anything set up. And I'm just going to say the cost is five, but I sell this for 10. I'm going to do the same for business premium. So basic math says I've got two of these and 18 and 24 is fine. Now, what I'm going to do with these two is I'm going to say these are my bundled costs. And you could actually rename this to, let's say, bundled licenses just to make this tidy. Bundled licenses. And what I'm going to say here is I'm going to keep the costs in. I'm going to say they get five of these, but I don't build a customer for these. These are included in that bundle. And I'm going to say so far, send point is the same. So we're going to have five of these. It doesn't cost the customer anything, but it does cost me £10 a user. And click save. Now, this is you pretty much done, to be honest with you. Um, we can now go to uh, invoicing. We can go to ready for invoicing. We can change the date to January because that's when this is next up. And I can create the invoice. And then we go over here. And then you can see that the user is getting charged 378. That is because we have five bronze support packages. That is 60 pound a user. License costs gives you the net total. Now, some people don't like to show these bundled prices. So when I do a generate PDF, this should hopefully be quite quick. Um, when you generate this, it then shows it on here. Now, some people don't like that. Don't know why that's stayed as that. Don't worry about it. Some people don't like this. So what you can do is if I just go ahead and delete this invoice. And I'm just going to jump in here and also delete any previous invoices as well. What you can do on your agreement is actually hide those items. So on the group, you will see this button here, which says hide group items on PDF. We can go ahead and click save on that. Now, unfortunately, as it currently stands, when we create this invoice in a minute, and let me just make sure that, okay, that's fine. 
The problem at the minute is, is when we do this, you will still see bundled licenses. So you could preface this with number of users or whatever to just have that line item. But let me show you how this looks now. If I change this to December, and I go ahead and create this invoice. And generate the PDF. Any moment this will load, I will assure you. Um, I've had a few problems with my sandbox tonight. I don't know if it's because I've been deleting and recreating these 20 times. This isn't my first take. I started this about two hours ago and then realized that my report was slightly wrong and then this was wrong and then, yeah, you know. Um, this is taking forever and a day. That has blocked the pop-up. Why not? Always allow. Let's try again. There you go. Don't know why this has stayed here. I'll have to look into that later. But this is what your invoice can look like to your customer. So you have your managed service cost here. This is the cost. You've got your license costs here. This is the cost. And then you have free of charge licenses down here. And it just shows the quantity of five. And that is pretty much the way to do bundled. In my opinion, the best way to do bundled because it keeps it all in one place. Having it sp split between, you know, you've got products with related items or bundled products that you then got to report back on, it becomes messy. And the good thing is, is I have a report for this. So I have this report in here. I will share the SQL with you um, down below. And it's called Agreement Profitability. And it looks like this. So total sold on invoice is 378. Let's go ahead and check that very quickly. That is correct, 378. And the total cost on invoice is 126, giving me a 252 invoice profitability score. If I was to go ahead and change a Cronus workstation backup and say the cost was 50 pounds and save it, and refresh this report, you will now see that the invoice profitability has gone down a lot because obviously that item has, has increased. Um, this is, for me, the best way to do it. Um, it keeps it all in one place. You can see it based on invoice as opposed to having to try and cross-reference, right? Is this related to the product cost? Is this an item cost? Is it changes it going up and down? For me, this is the best way to do it. Yes, there is some manual work. So if your cost does go up for SOFOS endpoint protection, you will have to go in every invoice and, you know, change this. Um, I would prefer that personally than having it automatically changing all my invoices based on, on values. Um, and that is pretty much it. This is the way I like to do bundled items. Um, again, said it's not the cleanest, but I think this is the easiest way. I will happily put my report SQL in the comments of this video below. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I've been Connor. Have a lovely day. Peace out.